All right, well, just to expand a bit on my video from the other day where I was pigging, piggybacking on Jason Giorgiani and what he has to say in the video that uh, the, the uh, video interview that he, he uh, does with, I believe his name is Mishlove. Is it Kevin Mishlove, uh, the interviewer? Um, anyway, it's linked in the other, my, my video from yesterday, the previous video, um, uh, on my channel before this one. Uh, and I was, I was discussing without getting too explicit about anything because I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, uh, touch on any particular aspect of this subject that I, that I thought might be counterproductive to touch upon, um, which I know, I know that's presumptuous on my part. I, I, having, having done this kind of thing for a while, you know, having had a, uh, a video channel and also, uh, also writing articles for the, on the internet where people can respond, I, you, you tend to get a sense of where quagmires, uh, you know, rhetorical quagmires can, can develop and you, you, you kind of want to avoid those if, if at all possible. And that's why I'm vaguer, uh, on certain aspects of this entire story than, than, uh, than maybe some of you wish I would be. Uh, and I understand the frustration that some of you might feel about that. But if you watch me, uh, if you watch Giorgiani's interview and you watch me, you, you, you see basically what's, what's going on. You can fill in the gaps on your own without me making it explicit. And by making it explicit, making it into something that, uh, produces this kind of rhetorical quagmire that I don't think is helpful, uh, in, uh, in advancing the truth, because that's what I'm after here. I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking for the truth, the, tr the pure unvarnished truth of things. So, uh, just, just to, to refer back to, uh, what, uh, what I was talking about yesterday about how there's a third entity or during the cold war, a third entity developed. It was a stateless entity, but a very powerful one, just the same. And it, it, it was an, it, it heavily infiltrated much of the West's institutions. And as long as the cold war was on, they, uh, they were not, uh, a, uh, subversive entity. They were, <clears throat> and, and I gave examples of how that was so and why that was so. Um, so when the Soviet Union was still a viable threat, when the Cold War was going on, <clears throat> this third force, this, this, uh, <clears throat> third entity, which, uh, was as opposed to the Soviet Union as the, 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 those in the, you know, freedom loving people in the West, Americanists and, and, uh, people who are, uh, fans of, uh, of, uh, liberty and, and, uh, and freedom and, in the American way and, <clears throat> and so forth, all those, all those good things, uh, the rugged individualism, uh, that, that, uh, is an earmark of, of the West. Um, this third entity was also, is also opposed to communism, but for very, very different reasons. They're, they're not opposed to communism because, because it's totalitarian. These are, because these are people who, uh, are, uh, are fine with being totalitarian. These are not people who prize freedom. Um, in fact, as I, I characterize them as, uh, elitist, uh, uh, homicidal eugenicists, but they also were, uh, see the, the Soviet Union or saw the Soviet Union as an enemy. So as long as the Cold War was on, they were, <clears throat> they didn't cause trouble. Uh, they didn't cause too much trouble uh, in the West. I, I mean, I think they're, I shouldn't say they caused no trouble because, you know, in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s uh, and into the 90s, there were plenty of, uh, of uh, 
destructive uh, cultural upheavals in the West. But I think in many ways, the what made the West cohesive culturally, uh, it was kept together. And these, uh, these would-be subversive forces didn't, didn't mess with it until the end of the Cold War, until the collapse of the Soviet Union. And then, ever since then, we've seen their uh, nefarious influence over, over the culture in the ways that I talked about in the video yesterday. I don't want to just repeat myself. But uh, I, I, I know there are people probably out there who doubt me when I say that these are the kind of people with a homicidal... Uh, uh, elitist eugenicist mindset. I want to invite you to uh, consider certain things. Jeffrey Epstein <clears throat> was uh, uh, very tight with all of these scientists, all of these uh, high toned professors at places like Harvard and MIT, and he uh, he wanted to, uh, and he was also very, very, very into white girls. Um, you know, usually blonde white girls, although blondes or brunettes, uh, you know, he, he, he could accept. I don't know. I don't know how he felt about redheads, but <laughs> but pretty much as long as you were white, young, and pretty, uh, Jeffrey Epstein wanted, uh, wanted you. Uh, in his stable. Um, and, uh, his whole idea was, uh, and he had all of his, a bunch of friends and a bunch of backers. Uh, he wanted to, first of all, populate, uh, uh, much of the world with his own seed. He had all of these, um, these, these sort of, these crazy kind of crackpot ideas, but who knows uh, maybe the science, uh, you know, could have, maybe, maybe the scientists could have helped him realize these kinds of goals. Uh, as I understand it, he wanted his, his penis to survive, <laughs> to survive his death and to go on <laughs> pumping out his seed. And he wanted to impregnate these beautiful girls, uh, you know, these, these underage girls that, that he was, bringing to the island and, uh, and, uh, prostituting out to, uh, to various important people. Um, it, it wasn't just a blackmail operation. Uh, it was that, but that, that wasn't all there was to it at all. Um, and a big buddy of, of Epstein, even though he, he tries to distance himself from him today, uh, uh, is, was Bill Gates. Um, now Bill Gates is from this, uh, you know, he, he's from this upper crust family, uh, and his father, <clears throat> I believe was heavily involved, uh, in Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood, which most of us today, most people today, today think of as a leftist, organization, and I suppose in a way they are, depends on, you know, how you, uh, uh, how you, you know, uh, where you put left and right, uh, the, the whole left, right paradigm in your mind. Uh, they're, they're, they're considered left because they, uh, are of course all, uh, gung ho for abortion and contraception and, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, sexual license, but Planned Parenthood, uh, Margaret Sanger and, and the others who came up with Planned Parenthood, uh, who originated this organization, uh, they, uh, they were all about eugenicism. It was all about weeding out the weeds, the human weeds, as I think Sanger uh, actually called called them, called, you know, people who were lives unworthy of life, you know, useless eaters, these, all these charming expressions that eugenicists have, uh, for people who, uh, who fail their, 
their uh, criteria of uh, you know uh, of what it means to be human, <clears throat> having no disabilities, you know, have, being of a of an intelligence above a certain uh, quotient level, um, you know, uh, and so forth and so on, not having defects like baldness. <laughs> I'm sure uh, would uh, they they would also count that. <clears throat> um, although maybe a bald guy like me could get by if he had other things going for him. I don't know. But anyway, um, so you have these uh, Bill Gates from this pedigree of that that was eugenicist in in origin and orientation <clears throat> for a long, long time. Uh, and, you know, even going back to the 20s and 30s, and there's lots of overlap. Um, and this is where I don't want to touch too heavily on this. Uh, I want to only touch lightly here, but there was lots of overlap between eugenicists in the Western world, where really eugenicists, eugenicism had gotten its start. Um, and people in continental Europe, including Germany, uh, who who just thought, you know, we've really got to catch up with the, you know, they're, they're just way ahead of us in the United States. They've got, you know, laws that forbid <clears throat> that the you know sterilization laws uh, and uh, laws that forbid the, the passing on of inferior, um, you know, useless eaters, uh, and we've got to catch up with them. We've got to get we've got to get our own thing going here. In, in Deutschland, um, there was a lot of overlap there. So, uh, so anyhow, uh, then you, get, you know, Bill Gates, uh, comes into his own as a c computer programming, um, uh, mogul. But then once he, he makes his, his millions and billions, <clears throat> some, you know, a lot of which he was, he was born into, uh, but, after he achieves the, this kind of success uh, in the tech world, then he starts. He sets out to be a quote unquote philanthropist, and his idea of philanthropy isn't. It's not going to the third world or going to poor and impoverished countries <clears throat> and trying to better their lot. You know, <clears throat> not uh, going to these places and helping them build their infrastructure. Uh, you know, hel helping them, uh, making it so that they have uh, better sanitation, more running water. Um, this is not the focus of Bill Gates. Uh, Bill Gates' philanthropy in the third world. What's the focus of his so-called philanthropy? <clears throat> it's pushing contraception. Um, and what else is the focus of his so-called philanthropy? It's getting involved uh, with these uh, these different types of injections um, and forcing these people for forcing people uh, in these impoverished places <clears throat> in India and in Africa, uh, forcing them into these experiments that uh, uh, that end up crippling or killing uh, a bunch of a uh, bunch of kids. <laughs> And yet he's still a, considered a philanthropist. He's, it's still thought, well, he's doing these things because he wants to better humanity. You know, what a crock. Um, well, in, in a sense, it's true. He wants to better humanity in the way that all eugenicists want to better humanity. <clears throat> uh, and there's a positive, you know, positive eugenics I don't have a problem with. Positive eugenics is let's just find a way to, uh, to, 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 uh, in, do the best we can to ensure that we have uh, we have healthy, strong offspring. Uh, and that's that's fine. That's good. Um, but negative eugenics is another thing entirely. Negative eugenics is, where, you know, we've got uh, this uh, we've got this offspring over here that are not healthy and str and strong and don't meet our criteria uh, of what uh, of where people should be. Uh, these are useless eaters. These are human weeds. They need to be plucked up and cast into the fire as if, you know, we have the kind of godlike authority to, to, uh, to decide 
who's human and, and who isn't, who, who isn't, who's properly human and who, who fails the test, uh, of, of not being properly human and thus being, uh, um, lives unworthy of life. So, <clears throat> so you've got people like Jeffrey Epstein, uh, who, uh, what was it that the, the, um, the attorney general of Florida who, who was in the Trump administration for a while, uh, he he, he said he was told that Epstein could not be touched. It was above his pay grade. <clears throat> and yes, a lot of that had to do with, with, uh, um, cloak and dagger stuff and, you know, spying and blackmailing and all of that. But that's not all, that's not all by, by a long shot. Um, and so my point in all of this is you see these kinds of people rising to the top and the, in, in the West. And you see that, that these kind of people represent this particular type of mentality, um, that, uh, is completely in line with the, the, uh, the mentality of that, that was big in, in Europe for a time, particularly in the thirties and forties. And I'll, and, uh, you had a lot of those people, like I talked about in the other, like, like, um, I, I refer to in the other video, but, 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 but what was referred to much more explicitly by Jason Giorgiani, um, about, uh, uh, things like Operation Paperclip and, uh, and the fact that, uh, the, that families like the Bushes and, uh, and the Ford Foundation and, uh, other, uh, and the Rockefellers, uh, and J.P. Morgan and much of the banking world, they were all of one mindset. They and Werner von Braun and uh, these other scientists that were rescued, thousands of people that were that were uh, rescued, uh, um, not persecuted, but plugged into the American uh, space program. <clears throat> um, following World War II, they were all of a very similar mindset. And this is the third entity. This is, this is a part of the third entity that I'm, that I am talking about. Um, some conflict comes in. I know some, some say, well, but, but, uh, you know, Jeffrey Epstein was obviously, is obviously not eth ethnically the same as, uh, as Bill Gates or, or, uh, Werner von Braun. That's true. That's true. Uh, in my estimation, you know, I think there are different factions of, uh, of, uh, homicidal, uh, elitist eugenicists. And there's probably a faction of them. There's certainly a faction of them that are people of, that particular ethnicity. Um, and I'm not just being coy here by not, <laughs> I, I really, I, I, I'm, uh, you know, partly I want to avoid the censor and partly I just, I, I just want to say enough to, to know to, so that you basically know that I am hip to or wise to, uh, what's, you know, what's going on. Uh, so, you know, not all eugenicists are uh, blonde, blue-eyed, uh, Nordic supermen types. Um, uh, in fact, the whole idea of eugenicism <clears throat> largely could be said to to come out of a uh, an, an ethnicity which which uh, believed very strongly in. The supremacy of its own bloodline. Um, uh, so you know who I'm. You know what I'm talking about there. And so you have someone like Epstein wanting to pass on his his you know seed, which he thought thought of as superior in some way, but he, he wanted it to be 
uh, he wanted to impregnate these beautiful uh, young white girls. <clears throat> um, was that just an aesthetic preference? I don't think so. I think, I think we're talking about, uh, I think we're talking about eugenics here. And in this way, he was backed up by tons and tons of powerful people and famous scientists, like, like, you know, people who, with names that, that you would know, uh, like that, <laughs> I can't remember his name. I know things always escape my mind, right? Uh, when I'm, when I'm, uh, doing off the cuff talks like this, but you know, the, the guy, the, the ALS, uh, uh, wheelchair, the naughty ALS wheelchair guy who, uh, who had affairs, didn't let his disability get in the way of having affairs on, with, uh, with a couple different women while he was married, um, <clears throat> who died a few years ago, who was also one of Epstein's cohorts, who was, who spent some time on the, on the notorious island. Um, <clears throat> so these are, you know, when, I, when you talk about this third entity that has, that is incredibly powerful, uh, and that uh, wanted to, that again saw fit to make an alliance uh, with. Uh, I better bring things to a close here. Um, that saw fit to make an alliance with the West until it was not it was not uh, fit anymore. I think you're starting to see the shape of what I'm talking about here. So I'll just end there. Thanks for watching.